Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. All right, folks, I know we're live, uh, and one second, we're setting up Max. We're going to Zechariah chapter 14 to start this broadcast. We'll be using Fair Use Act. It's teaching purposes only, today's broadcast. Uh, we're going to help enhance the current world events, the understanding of it, and how it relates to biblical prophecies. So uh, we're going to use the Fair Use Act. Brock Begley's here to produce the broadcast, and we've got a great one for you today. Russia's takeover of the Middle East. I've been saying, watch for it, watch for it, watch for it. There it is. Well, it looks like it has begun, and there's a showdown coming between Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump in Paris, France on November 11th, and I'm concerned the president may not be in the right frame of mind for this meeting. Uh, he really may not be in the right frame of mind, okay? So you see Europe, you see Russia, you see the, all the uh, Islamic nations. Uh, Israel's right there in the middle of that. What does this all mean, okay? Well, let's go right now to the word of the Lord. Here comes Max. He's going to be reading from the King James Version of the Bible, Zechariah 14. Moses, going unto Pharaoh. Oh, that's not Zechariah 14. Exodus 9. No, 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 no. That's not. The Lord said unto Moses. Okay, okay. Hang on one second. There's something wrong there. Let's see if we can do it this way. Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14. Behold, the day the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee, and it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, mm. but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. Mm. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea, in summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up, and inhabited in her place. From Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate. And from the tower of Hananiel, unto the king's winepresses. And men shall dwell in it and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day, that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, 
and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Not good. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel, in great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Wow! And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up, and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt, and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Mm. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them, and seethe therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. You know, we read this story uh, yesterday, I think yesterday during the day broadcast, and then we read a different about the plagues of Egypt at night. I want to read it again today because of two different stories that are taking place right now, uh, breaking this. Uh, yesterday, there was a story that we talked about Russia uh, literally telling Israel, you better not fly any more planes into Syria trying to hit Iranian targets because the Syrians will use the S-300 missile defense system and shoot your planes down. Also, Netanyahu has requested a meeting with Vladimir Putin while uh, they're having this uh, uh, gathering in Paris, France um, this weekend, and Putin has said no. Instead, Putin's going to meet with President Donald Trump on 11-11, Veterans Day, and the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I. And they're going to be talking... Big boy stuff here. We're talking nuclear uh, weapons. Putin has already recommissioned some of the warheads that were uh, taken out of play back in the late 1980s, early 90s, with the 1987 agreement between Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev. Trump has accused Putin of breaking the treaty by recommissioning these nuclear warheads. Putin is saying, no, I'm not breaking the treaty. I'm just, you know, this was part of the system. I'm, some of them I phase out, some of them I bring back. Trump is saying, no, 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 no. We, our intelligence show it. So they're gonna meet, and Trump is threatening to end the agreement and start making nukes himself, bringing his nukes back. And of course, so this is a big high-level meeting coming up in Paris, France on November the 11th. So we have a lot of folks praying about this. This is a big time deal and um, everybody should stay focused. Now, meanwhile, besides the Paris France meeting coming up, uh, <clears throat> we've got a lot going on. First of all, the president is not in the right frame of mind. He's coming off the midterms. Uh, he's all right because the, you know, in his mind, look, everywhere he went and campaigned, they, he won. His candidate won every place he was fighting for. Uh, and he picked up two, maybe three Senate seats and strengthened the Senate. But the House flipped to the Democrats, which it was expected. It always does. Every president, the last seven or eight presidents, it's always flips at the midterm and during their first term. But and it wasn't as bad as uh, Bill Clinton lost 58 seats. His... Uh, midterm election and Barack Obama lost 63 seats uh, in his uh, Trump loses 38 
But uh, the, the key point here is, now that the Democrats are in power of the House of Representatives, will they legislate or investigate? Are they going to work with the president to try to get some stuff done? Or are they going to spend time uh, investigating the Trump administration? Nancy Pelosi apparently wants to legislate. She wants to get some stuff done and she can't have it both ways. You can't legislate with the president and investigate him at the same time. You got to pick which way you want to go. If you want to legislate, you need to back off the investigations and work with the president and he'll work with the Democrats and everybody else and they'll get some stuff done. But if they go after him or go after his family or go after his administration, then he'll just back off and then it just get uglier and uglier. And we, nobody wants to see this. And so we have to wait and see which hand the uh, House of Representatives are going to play. We really don't know which way they're going to go. It's either legislate or investigate. I think some of the Democrats want to legislate, like Nancy Pelosi, and I think some of them want to investigate. Okay. And the question is, is there enough strength uh, in the Democratic Party to, does Nancy Pelosi have enough power to rein in those that would want to uh, go after the president and instead work with the Senate and the president to come up with some good stuff for the United States? We'll wait and see, okay? That's yet to be, yet to be uh, proven. Now, having said all that, let's uh, tell you what else is happening. But Russia and Israel, big time tension building now. All of a sudden, I told you all this time, everybody said, no, Israel's just fighting with Syria. They're, they're fighting with Iran. They're fighting with the different groups. They're saying, stay out of Israel, stay out of Israel. Russia's the one that brought these people to the table, guys. It is Vladimir Putin who brought the Iranians to Israel's back door. Okay? And I told you at some point, Russia steps up and says, we're going to tell you what to do. And that moment has come. Just about the time that they're going to talk about building the third temple. Vladimir Putin has got to the point where that moment has come. Okay, that moment has come. Let me tell you uh, what's going on. We have an article just breaking. Then I'm going to tell you about the third temple. Incredible prophecy alert there as well. These two stories are happening simultaneously. First of all, let's talk about Putin and is Russia about to take over the Middle East? Is this a takeover of the Middle East? It's the question that everybody is trying to consider. There's two articles out there. First one, Debka filed. The title is U.S. urges Russia to allow and uh, Israel to resume airstrikes in Syria. Uh, a special U.S. envoy uh, to, for Syria, James Jeffrey, said on Wednesday, November 7th, we certainly hope Russia's permissive... Oh my. You tell me the phone lines are down. That's because I never turned it on. Thank you, Heidi. Bad. That's a bad mistake on my part. Normally I don't do that. Ah, I've, I'm so sorry. Thank you, you guys. Hang on, we'll get it up here and going. One second. My apologies. Welcome. This service is provided by freeconferencecall.com. There is one host and two participants in this conference. All participants are muted. Because people tried to... Turn it on and it wasn't working. I apologize to those couple of you that are still there. I messed up there. Okay. Uh, forgot to get that turned on. All right, here we go. So here's the story. Um, U.S. is urging Russia, let Israel continue to protect itself. We certainly hope that Russia's permissive approach will continue for Israeli airstrikes in Syria against the Iranian targets. Despite its supply of S-300 air defense systems, the Syrian government, uh, he noted, that Russia has been permissive about flights in the past in consultation with the Israelis. 
The American diplomat spoke after a meeting that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had in Jerusalem on Monday, November 5th. However, according to Debka's files, military sources, they have seen no sign of Moscow relenting, quite the reverse. Matter of fact, Moscow indicated this week that should Israeli jets enter Syrian airspace to attack Iranian targets, the S-300 defense system would shoot them down. According to our sources, Ambassador Jeffries of the United States talks with Netanyahu, attended also by high-ranking IDF officials, encompassed the situation in Syria, including the possibility of a military clash between Russia and Israel. That's not good, but it is Ezekiel 38. And uh, I can't believe I'm reading this. The clash is uh, to take place shortly after President Donald Trump sits down with President Vladimir Putin in Paris on Sunday, November the 11th, or even while it's taken place. The prime minister shared with the U.S. ambassador intelligence showing that Syrian operating teams installing the S-300 batteries in recent days and getting in position to fire at Israeli aircraft, not just military planes, and not just over Syria, but also commercial flights flying over Israel. This was the data which the Israeli ministers also disclosed on Monday in a very rare briefing to Russian correspondents. He, app, he appended a warning. If its aircraft were struck in this way, Israel would not be satisfied with demarches, but take action against the S-300 batteries, even if they were manned by Russian personnel. Two days later, the Kremlin shot back by clarifying that President Putin had no intention of meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu in Paris next Sunday and that the Russian-Israeli dispute is not going away anytime soon, but is deepening. All right, now that's one article. That, was a, that came out of Dep Kafal. But now this morning we have another one to help us understand what's going on here uh, in this uh, very dangerous situation developing. Uh, it's called World War III, Russian takeover in the Middle East. U.S. fears that the missiles may suppress the key ally in Syria's conflict. The United States fears that Russia's power in the Middle East as a new missiles protecting Iran and Syria may deter Israel from attacking its arch enemy, despite previously allowing strikes to take place. The Russians, who has a strategic relationship with both Israel and Iran, has delivered a modern S-300 surface-to-air missile system capable of shooting down Israeli planes. The inflammatory move comes after a Russian Il-20 surveillance plane was accidentally struck down by a Syrian government anti-aircraft in September. The Syrian forces were responding to an Israeli air raid against a su suspected weapons depot linked to Iran over there in western Syria. You may remember that happening. Moscow blames Israel for this incident, claiming the Israeli military did not give the Russian forces enough warning for this surprise attack. U.S. envoy to Syria, James Jeffries, said yesterday that the United States were betting on Russia's and Israel's relationship to remain despite this incident. He said, we are concerned very much about the S-300 system being deployed to Syria. The issue is at the detail level. Who will control it? Who will roll with it and play? In the past, Russia has been permissive in its consultation with the Israelis about Israel strikes against the Iranian targets inside of Syria. We certainly hope that the permissive approach will continue. Mr. Netanyahu has vowed to continue strikes, as has his defense minister, Lieberman. 
And indeed, reports have emerged that alleged Israeli forces have conducted such operations even since the Russian plane was shot down. Now, while Russia and Iran have backed the Syrian government in the civil war, Israel has joined the United States and other allies, including Turkey and Saudi Arabia, in supporting the rebel groups who oppose President Bashir al-Assad. All right. So any reduction in their involvement in supporting the United States in the conflict would be a major boost to Russia in their dominance of the country. And Russia has so far tried to balance its relations with arch enemies Israel and Iran, but the downing of that aircraft on top of the 200 Israeli attacks already on Iranian positions in Syria has increased the tensions. Well, what did you expect? How long could Israel kept going over there blowing up Iranian uh, locations before Team Gog and Magog would strike back? And it's beginning now. Putin is saying, that's enough, Israel. Basically what Putin is saying, this is a takeover of the Middle East. Iran is here to stay. Syria's Assad is going to remain in power and the Russians are going to manage the Middle East. The United States is backing away and Israel, you're just going to have to deal with it. Now work with us. Israel's saying, we'll work with you, Russia, but we're never, ever, ever, ever going to work with Iran. And if you bring Iran to our backyard, we will blow them up. And of course, Russia's now saying, if you keep trying to do that, we will shoot you down. And that causes the meeting coming up Sunday. Paris, France, the showdown between Trump and Putin. Meanwhile, Trump has got a deal with Jim Acosta at CNN getting in his face and the ugly press conference that he had yesterday and all of the other investigations and things that are going on and the fact that Trump was in a real bad mood and fired the Attorney General Jeff Sessions. But instead of picking Rod Rosenstein to be the acting Attorney General, he chose the Chief of Staff, Matt Whitaker. Now Whitaker will now oversee the Mueller investigation. What is Whitaker going to do? Well, Whitaker can only be in that position for 210 days. So here we go, the swamp and all of the maneuvering going on in Washington. So that kind of stuff is clouding the mind, I think, uh, of the president. He has got to clear his mind. He can't be badgered. He can't be pressured at home while going to sit down with Vladimir Putin in Paris. We need to pray the president has a clear mind because I believe Putin has a clear, crystal clear objective that he is already starting to implement. And Netanyahu knows it and is trying to figure out a way to get Putin to not shut him out of Syria. This is getting very interesting. And I guess if I was to ask this question to our audience there in the chat room, um, will Israel back down or will Israel, despite what Putin says about shooting down their planes, will Israel go into Syria and still strike Iranian targets? Yes or no? Will Israel still strike Iranian targets? Yes or no? Let's let the audience vote. We're going to put the camera right on the audience. Alan says no. Um... Let's see who else wants to respond. Alan says, yes, they'll strike. Okay. Yes, 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 no. Yes, 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 they should. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, they will. Yes, they won't back down. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I think you just, we just saw the answer. Everybody's, oh, there's one no there. But basically about a 90, 97% says yes. All right. Pretty informed um, listening audience here. Very informed. I want to thank all 582 of you watching on the Backup YouTube channel for participating in that survey. So in other words, what you folks just said was this. It don't matter what Putin says. 
Russia will continue. I mean, it doesn't matter. Israel will still fly into Syria despite being warned by Russia not to and will still strike Iranian targets. But the question is, will Russia then shoot down the Israeli planes? Let's ask that question to the same audience. Benjamin Netanyahu wants to hear what you guys got to say. Will, if he does go in, because since you all said he is, will Russia shoot him down? Or does he have the capability to avoid the S-300? Has he got the ability to, they can't get him. Will Russia shoot him down? Let's look at the answers. Yes, they will. Yes, yes, yes. It'll be a bad day, but yes. Thank you for forming us. Right. No. Yes. Big mistake. No, not time yet. Yes, yes. Israel make Putin pay for meddling. Yes, 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 no. Yes, 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 no, no. Yes, 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 no. Yes, 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 no. Okay, so good, good. And think, and one person said, thanks for informing us, and I appreciate that. That is a very, very important question I'm asking. And what you folks said is this. Israel will fly in there and still hit Iranian targets and you folks also said by about 85% and Russia will shoot them down. If you say that that's the case, folks, you're reading Ezekiel 38. Because look who's on the field. Russia, Team Gog and Magog. Russia, Iran, the Turks have already said they're in agreement. You know Libya is a chaotic situation and Ethiopia and Several other nations will join in. So you have to understand, how big is this meeting with Trump and Putin on, in Paris, France on Sunday on the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I? Are we on the brink of World War III? And so certainly the title of our show, which Brock and I were debating what to title this show and what would be the lead story, we decided to go with Russia takeover of the Middle East. We're not saying they have taken it over, but it is, it appears to be an objective, but that is a biblical prophecy. And we're looking at it right before our very eyes. <clears throat> Keep that on the back burner. <clears throat> Get a cup of coffee. Everybody calm down because how does that play in to this next story? Now I would normally go into my earthquakes, although I'm wanting to tell you another story on the, on the third temple, but let's go to the earthquakes and show you what's going, because whatever's going in the spiritual world manifest is in the physical, including tonight's mic from around the world and the five waves of energy. And we've been sharing with you the last two nights, we've done uh, pa Patreon videos, of course, on the effects of the incoming Planet X based on the 1950 research incredible because that 1950 research is exactly almost what Mike from the world says that NASA is now indicating and maybe not just NASA. He's got other sources that are, uh, he's not sharing all that information with us, but there's enough there to understand something's causing the heavens to shake. Well, let's talk, look at the earthquakes. Start there because what we have is 27 earthquakes the last 24 hours. None of them really major, so you know that's some good news. I mean, you got that 4.8 right there in Indonesia, and you got a 5.0 earthquake that hit Taiwan. Uh, you have a 4.5 in Fiji, followed by a 4.9 in Fiji, and a 4.4 up there in Japan right there. And we had a 4.7 earthquake in Chile. <clears throat> and we had a 4.5 in Indonesia, also a 5.0 in Tonga. That's pretty strong. 5.2 Indonesia, 4.7 Micronesia, and a 4.6 Tiakistan. All right. And of course, a 3.1 just hit California. But there is the, um, the earthquake map. And uh, it's just pretty, <clears throat> really pretty normal. But I'll show you what's not normal is what's going on up in space. Um, here's what's happening. First of all, 
We've got this incredible wind speed is now up to 512 kilometers per second blowing on the surface of the sun and it's blowing right through a gaping hole on the, the sun's atmosphere. A large hole in the sun's atmosphere is facing the earth and it is spewing solar wind toward our planet. Estimated arrival, Saturday, November 10th. Same day that we're being inundated by the third wave of the five waves of energy. And we're being near missed by two asteroids out of the three this weekend. So we got pressure from the sun, the wave of energy, and three near miss asteroids. And while that's going on, um, we have no doubt in our minds that there's going to be some radiation, right? Check this out. Last night, last night, incredible. I mean, literally, look at the sky over Sweden. What? The green between the storms, they're calling it. There was no geomagnetic storm on November 7th over Sweden, but it, it still, there was so much radiation in the air, Brock, it turned the entire sky green. And look at this. You have to, this is green. You have to look. It was a real cloudy day. I mean, night. That's nighttime. Real cloudy last night. Yet the green was so evident that it went through the clouds. Unbelievable. Massive auroras dancing across the sky in um, Sweden last night. And, uh, so it's a, it's a fascinating situation. We still got the same chart from yesterday. They're still showing us there were 40 fireballs that broke through the Earth's atmosphere uh, yesterday. And of course, these three asteroids that we're talking about, three asteroids that are going to near miss the Earth this weekend. November 9th, you have asteroid 2018 VA2. It will miss us by only 1.9 lunar distance. And then... On Saturday, we have 2018 VS1. That will miss us by 3.6 lunar distance. And then the third one, also on Saturday, 2018 VX1, it will miss us by only one lunar distance. Those are all three very close. All this weekend, wow. so you have these three asteroids coming our direction this weekend and you have this solar winds coming off the sun, blowing through that open gaping hole facing us from the sun this weekend. And you have the third wave of the five waves of energy. Mike from around the world, what does this mean? I want to ask him, what does this all mean? This convergence, is there something there? Is that part of the planet X shaking of the heavens? I really, really, really want to know what his take is on this. I mean, I'm just doing my homework, identifying what's out there and what's about to happen. But folks, them three asteroids, plus the sun's pressure, plus the wave of energy with that fine red dust. What about the hail mingled with ice and fi liquid fire? We talked about that in a video uh, yesterday, and I went into real, uh, very... Uh, um, detailed from that 1950 uh, manuscript on how the effects that already hit the plague, of, it was the eighth plague of Egypt, but it was also happened in different locations around the globe and documented by different um, uh, people, different tribes in different documentation, which was all happening around the world. So that means, it, if it was, then it means God was shaking the heavens. It was affecting the planet, but it didn't affect the Jews. They never, the, Israel, the children of Israel never experienced the plagues. It's unbelievable. But the Mayans sure did. They documented it in their uh, manuscript. Same time it was happening in Egypt, it happened in Mexico. And a whole lot more, okay? So here we go again. It's coming again, apparently. What does that mean? And when is it going to really? And, and, and it's a process. It's not one day. It's not like, okay, Planet X just went by. We're okay, I guess. No, it's coming. If it's going by, it's creating all kinds of havoc on the planet. 
And if you read what Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word abideth forever. If you read about the wrath of God poured out on this planet, it is a steady stream of destructive acts of angels pouring out vials upon the heavens and the sun and the earth and the waters. And then if you read 2 Peter 3, it tells you the earth is going to burn up. It's going to melt with fervent heat, even the elements thereof. So if you know that these things are coming, I think it's, it's important to, to not be shocked when you start to see the beginning precursors of it. And I don't know if there is a Planet X, Nibiru. I don't know how God's doing it. But it, apparently he did it once. But the second time he does it coming is the most devastating of all. You're not going to live here forever. This planet is not going to survive forever. There will be a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's what the Bible says. Oh, but Brother Begley, that's not what I read in that one book. But, you know, I don't care what you read in that one book. This is what the Word of God says. And this is exactly what's going to happen. And uh, it's important to understand this is not a novel we're de dealing with. We're dealing with the conclusion to God's uh, great experiment if you will in creation of mankind and he's finally saying all right i've sent my son to redeem them many have chosen him many have rejected him i'm giving them ample opportunity at some point i'm calling it quits i'm going to call the game early even at least there be no flesh saved again words of jesus christ and so let me just say let's let's stay focused on this let's understand that this is what the scriptures say um, now, while that's going on, we've got more things taking place. I got to go to the Sanhedrin. Now's the time. I wanted to, I know we had a shooting in California. I'm going to get to that. But folks, this is what I'm saying. There's people are going to be doing these violent acts every day. Now it's just going to keep happening worldwide. I mean, there's some guy in Georgia crawled up in the attic of the waffle house with no pants on and fell through the ceiling. I, I don't even want to talk. I mean, I don't even understand that story. And then you got the guy doing the shooting out there at the country music bar in Thousand Oaks, California. And you got the chaos and the craziness and the wars and the rumors of wars. It's insane. Who's that guy? That's the Waffle House guy? Oh, my God. And I mean, I like Waffle House, to be quite honest with you. But uh, Lord have mercy. Where's that at? Was it Georgia or was it Alabama? Alabama. I'm sorry. Georgia, I apologize. It, was, it actually happened in Alabama. Okay. Anyway, let me, uh, let's up. <laughs> focus with me for a minute. Now let's talk about the third temple. Get this. So there was an article just came out today uh, from uh, Breaking Israeli News. The Sanhedrin announced that they have sent a letter to both of the last two remaining mayoral candidates who to be the next mayor of Jerusalem. Sanhedrin urges the candidates for Jerusalem mayor to prepare for the third temple. That is the headline. That is the headline. Now, I can tell you that is the headline that they put on the breaking Israeli news. Brock captured it. I did a video about this story. 30 minutes later, I went back to the article and they changed the headline, Brock. So I want you to take a look at my uh, screen and I'll show you. They've changed the headline. I don't know if Rabbi Weiss was getting pressure a little bit or what, but... Uh, he, uh, the, I don't know, maybe they just felt like this headline's a little more softer. But it says, which Jerusalem mayoral candidate will build the temple? Same. Okay, so they changed the, they changed the headline from the Sanhedrin is asking a question of both of these candidates. Which one of you is going to build the third temple? See this, Sanhedrin urges candidates for Jerusalem mayor to prepare for the third temple. 
But then they changed the title after I did a video. I did a video on it. It's, it's doing pretty well. Blew out of the, came out of the blocks. Uh, and then all of a sudden I noticed they changed it. Now I'm not saying they changed it because of my video. I think maybe they changed it just because it, it's a little shorter and maybe a little, a little softer. But their title is Which Jerusalem Mayoral Candidate Will Build the Temple? So they're still talking about the third temple. Now, and who's going to be in charge? Well, let's read on. There's the two guys that are running for mayor. They are Ofer Berkovich. That's the one on the left, the younger guy. He's a secular Jew. And the one on the right, that's Moshe Lyon. He is a religious Jew, very close ties to Benjamin Netanyahu. I personally think he is going to win, but I don't know. Now, Jerusalem will have a new mayor next week, and more than any other election this year, it will decide the religious nature of Israel's capital. The Sanhedrin has addressed a letter to the two candidates emphasizing the role of the third temple in the municipal current policy. The Jerusalem mayoral election held last week ran five candidates. The results were so close that an additional runoff has to be done this next week. It's needed to choose between the top two. Moshe Lyon, age uh, we got 33% of the vote last week, while Ofer Berkovic got 29%. Under Jewish constitutional law, you must get at least 40% to win the election. So you get rid of the other three guys that ran, and now you run it between two guys. Now you're going to get a winner, okay? One of these guys is going to win. A lion, the one on the right, Moshe Lion, has previously been closely allied with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Back in 1996, Moshe Lyon was appointed managing director of the Prime Minister's office, serving simultaneously as his economic advisor. He continued in both those roles until 1999. Netanyahu, however, was not officially endorsed by, has not officially endorsed either candidate. Berkovich, is the founder and chairman of Jerusalem's Awakening Project in Jerusalem, a non-aligned Zionist political movement appointed as one of the city's eight deputy mayors back in 2013. He has been instrumental in passing laws to increase affordable housing in the city, such as double taxing the owners of vacant properties and allowing local authorities to utilize public lands for the purpose of building apartments which would be rented out at low prices. He wants to make Jerusalem cleaner and even more high-tech friendly. He has sponsored joint Arab-Israeli cultural sports projects. And when Arabs see that Jews are fighting with them shoulder to shoulder for a clean city, that the eastern part of the city remain clean, it will change their thinking, according to Berkovich in an interview with Times of Israel. So what does this mean? Well, the Sanhedrin has sent a letter to both candidates, and they're asking them, which are you ready to handle the, the third temple, the massive infrastructure that is needed to handle millions of people that will be coming to Jerusalem to see the third temple once it's built. You have to be thinking about the infrastructure. You have to be the mayor that builds the third temple infrastructure. The religious Jewish aspect of being the mayor of Jerusalem was amplified to even greater degree in an open letter by the Sanhedrin sent to both candidates. Quote, with God's merciful approval, one of you will be chosen as head of this city. May it be built and made ready for the ultimate purpose, the Sanhedrin letter said. We call on the candidates as well as the voters to make choices based on truth and on the main aspect of Jerusalem, which is the building of the third temple. The Sanhedrin wrote a letter also similar to that to U.S. President Donald J. Trump after he won his election, calling on him to take a role in the building of the third temple. 
just as the Persian king Cyrus helped the Jews build the second temple after the Babylonian exile of 70 years during the sixth century. And what did Trump do? He did exactly that. He helped, he, he declared Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and is involved in some type of peace plan that's gonna get unveiled very soon, which I'm sure includes the building of the third temple. Here's what the Bible said in Isaiah. That's right, there's Trump, there's Jared Kirshner, who's actually leading the negotiations uh, with the, all the Middle Eastern countries. There's Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, here's what the Bible says in Isaiah 44. Remember, Russ Dizdar said, Trump has the anointing of King Cyrus. Uh, this was also confirmed to me uh, by Rabbi Yehuda Glick, believe it or not, and also was confirmed uh, uh, by Avi Lipkin and was also confirmed uh, by uh, Dr. Irvin Baxter. Uh, and I don't even know, there might be several other uh, prophecy preachers and teachers and understanding of eschatology that may have also understood this comparison. I certainly did. And if you read Isaiah 45, here's what it said in verse 27. That saith to the deep, be dry and I will dry up thy rivers. That saith unto Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure. Even say unto Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. Are you serious? Then in the next chapter, Isaiah 45, thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two levied gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will give thee the treasures of, thy, of darkness and the hidden riches of the secret place. That's him signing the decree right there to make Jerusalem the capital. And that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, am the God of of Israel. So he calls King Cyrus a Persian king, calls him his shepherd and his anointed for, for establishing Jerusalem and the laying of the foundation of the second temple. Trump seemingly is going right down the same path. It's quite an extraordinary situation. Now the Sanhedrin are calling on these two mayor candidates which one is going to be prepared to build the infrastructure? Now, let me read on in this article. Here's what it said. So uh, the Sanhedrin said, avoiding this essential issue endangers the existence of the city and its identity as the capital of Israel. We expect you as a candidate to relate to this role of the city as home of the temple. The subject is not simply a matter of religious belief, but must also be expressed in political, fiscal, and educational terms. The Sanhedrin emphasized the importance of Jerusalem in the world in this letter. They noted that the capital of Israel is frequently the focus of domestic politics, and in the case of Trump, has become an essential part of his platform. In the letter, the Sanhedrin praised Trump for moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Now you guys have been watching me for over eight, almost nine years. You know, way back in, two, in 2010 and 2011, I told people, when you see the U.S. Embassy move to Jerusalem, know that that's the stepping stone to the building of the third temple. I would say that in videos way back in 2010, 2011. Everybody just looked at me like, you know, like I had a third eye in my head or something. Now what they say is they realize what's going on is this. It has happened, and now what's, it's the stepping stone. It's exactly what it is, and we knew it was coming. The prophecies of the Bible told us it was coming. The, 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 the nations that are starting to surround Jerusalem, you know that the desolation thereof is nigh. 
This also means the, that somewhere in the weeds is lurking is the Antichrist, somewhere uh, preparing for his rise at some point. Well, also the recognition of the Messiah is coming. When the temple's built, the Jewish people believe that God will reveal to them the Messiah and they are ready to receive him. I truly believe that they will see that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is the son of the living God. And the Sanhedrins then emphasized this in their letter. They said to the uh, folks, the two candidates, they said, Jerusalem in its entirety is a sanctified as holy and is the spiritual center of the world, the throne of God. We urge you to make public your plans relating to the aspect of the city. There are several ways that this can be accomplished, such as festivals of holiness and replace those of impurity. The Sanhedrin has already begun working toward this end, holding full dress reenactments of the temple service before the biblical feast. Another glorious example of this was the world creation concert held the week before Rosh Hashanah which several representatives from South American countries attended. The Sanhedrins have now emphasized that the city will change when the temple is built, requiring massive improvements to its infrastructure. Quote, Jerusalem must prepare to host the millions of pilgrims who will attend the feast when the third temple is built. That is Zechariah 14. It tells you. They will come from all over the world to worship the king uh, the, <laughs> and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So these guys are saying it's coming. We also call on the government to prepare a center for the international body to replace the United Nations and the Hague, one that will be rooted in the Bible. All right. So they're basically saying to these two mayoral candidates. Gentlemen, what is your plan for the building of the third temple? What is your plan? Will you include the building up of the infrastructure to handle? Because you have to understand people, when the third temple is built, do you realize how many people will come to Jerusalem to see it? You have to understand the millions upon millions. It's insane. The hotels will never be able to hold all the people. There'll be at least for the first five years an insane amount of people from all over the globe who will plan on coming to see that temple because it is such a historical, biblical, prophetic event. But the king of glory is coming. That's what I'm excited about. I know they're going to build the temple, but I'm looking for the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He is coming, folks. This is a sign that he is coming way sooner than I even thought. Way sooner than I... I never thought I would even be talking about this situation right now. I never thought in my lifetime I would have even seen the U.S. Embassy move as the first stepping stone, let alone that this event could happen. And then, of course, you have uh, several more events that will happen. They will start to fall like dominoes as we're getting ready for the coming of the Lord. I don't know the day. I don't know the hour that the Lord of Lords is coming, but I can see the day approaching. And that's why I sat down with Dr. Irvin Baxter to discuss four key controversial points, not trying to stick them in the timeline, just wanting to know what about these four things. And uh, that DV, we, it's in. I forgot this. I was supposed to show you that. Heidi said, do you have it? You should show them. It's here. All right. It is. It's the final day's prophecy. Yes, it's all four DVDs are in here. It is here. Get your copy right now while we still got them. Okay. Get your copy right now because they are going to ship out of here today. Get it ordered today. I'll be right back. Hour number two, we got the shooting in California and a whole lot more. Edward Snowden's got some information. We got some ugly situations all over the world. The Final Days Prophecy, a powerful four-part DVD set. Dr. Irvin Baxter sat down with me to discuss the prophecies of the last days, the red heifer, the mark of the beast, 
the Middle East peace deal, the two witnesses, all of it in this unique package prophetically prepared for you in this end time. You don't want to miss this one. Get your copy today at paulbegleyprophecy.com. For Horsemen of the Apocalypse, a four DVD set that looks into the most controversial subjects of the end time prophecies. The Four Horsemen. Oh yes, we're talking about the white one, the red, the black, the green, all of these phases of the breaking of the seals in these end times. Are you ready for the challenge? Well, get this DVD set only at my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. A brand new DVD, Zombie Apocalypse 2. I sat down with L.A. Marzulli and got a first-hand account from Pastor Casper McLeod. This DVD deals with the demonic spirits manifesting in the world today. The zombie craze has certainly caught the eye of Hollywood and movies and TV series. But do you really know what it is? Get the DVD. It's at my website right now. Secrets of the Sacred Incense, an unbelievable, extraordinary journey to find the apothecary, the mystical caves in the Holy Land where the sacred incense of the first temple were discovered. Come with me on a journey that will literally enlighten you to the truth of the last days, the biblical ramifications of the third temple, all in this powerful DVD. Get a copy of it now at my website. The Final Days Prophecy, a powerful four-part DVD set. Dr. Irvin Baxter sat down with me to discuss the prophecies of the last days. The Red Heifer, the Mark of the Beast, the Middle East Peace Deal, the Two Witnesses, all of it in this unique package prophetically prepared for you in this end time. You don't want to miss this one. Get your copy today at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, a four DVD set that looks into the most controversial subjects of the end time prophecies. The Four Horsemen, oh yes, we're talking about the white one, the red, the black, the green, all of these phases of the breaking of the seals in these end times. Are you ready for the challenge? Well, get this DVD set only at my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. The Final Days Prophecy, a powerful four-part DVD set. Dr. Irvin Baxter sat down with me to discuss the prophecies of the last days. The Red Heifer, the Mark of the Beast, the Middle East Peace Deal, the Two Witnesses, all of it in this unique package prophetically prepared for you in this end time. You don't want to miss this one. Get your copy today at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Are you serious? Are you serious? All right, folks. I mean, what a power-packed first hour that was. Brock said to me, good job, great job with that first hour. I mean, did you see what we talked about? The Russian or Israeli situation, the Middle East, the Iranians, everybody circling Israel, just like it says in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that's coming. Uh, the proclamations against Israel, just like it says in Psalms 83 and the Sanhedrin's letter to the two new mayor, which one of these guys is gonna be the mayor of Jerusalem? Get ready to build the third temple. They're not even, they're not hiding this no more, guys. This, I mean, this is out there in your face. It's coming. And you know, you know that the prophecies are coming very quickly. But now there's a lot of stuff also happening around the world that's a very important. This is a tragic event that happened in California last night at about 11.20 p.m. Pacific time, a mass shooting took place. A man wearing a trench coat, dressed all in black, went into a country music bar on college night. A lot of these kids that were in there are, are under the age of 21. So if you're under 21, they put a mark on your hand, you're not allowed to drink. 
If you're over 21, you can't. What they do is line dancing, okay? So there was over 200 people in there that come from all these different colleges to, to go. And, and so this uh, gentleman uh, by the name of Ian David Long, there he is right there, Ian David Long, a uh, Marine Corps veteran, something went terribly wrong, guys. Something's gone terribly wrong with him. And he came into the bar with a 45 uh, caliber Glock handgun with a, with a magazine on it. So uh, uh, he, he was bringing in a 45 with a, with a magazine to it. And he, he threw in some smoke grenades to create uh, chaos and confusion while he opened up with the pistol. He killed 11 people, including that man. Uh, that is a 29-year um, veteran of the police force who went in and was shot and killed. So 12 people were killed before Ian David Long took the gun and killed himself. Uh, tragedies. Plus, there was about 10 or 15 people injured as well. So there was a very tragic situation developing there in Thousand Oaks, California. That's in Los Angeles, California. Um, and so it's, um, you know, all of you in LA and everybody in California, everybody in this nation, our hearts go out to all the victims, their families. We realize that this is uh, shocking news. But uh, here we go again, another country music fan base, okay? We had the Las Vegas shooting, and now we have this. And I, I'm, this is, it's kind of weird, but uh, it happened again. Now, the information we have on this uh, is uh, very disturbing, but uh, here's what took place. There's 12 people dead after the trench coat. Gunman stormed the student night at the country bar. The shooter then killed himself as he was throwing smoke grenades into the dance floor and killing a cop as well. The shooter opened fire at the borderline bar and grill in Thousand Oaks, Southern California there in, um, at 11.20 p.m. The man was dressed in all black and he let it off at least 30 shots from a pistol with an extended magazine. The shooter who has not been yet identified, although I've just identified him, he's Ian David Long, also um, killed a sheriff sergeant who had responded to the scene. A 29 year veteran who was getting ready to retire in middle of next year. There were around 100 people, first was estimated in the bar, but now they say there was over 200 and um, this was a tragic, tragic scene. When the, when the first police officer arrived at the scene, three minutes later, after the calls came out, the gunman shot one of them multiple times before killing himself. The SWAT teams arrived, but he was already dead. The sheriff sergeant who was shot died on the way to the hospital. His name was Ron Hellis, and he was a 29-year veteran of the police force. Of course, this man, Ian David Long, what got into his mind? What caused him? What possessed him? What created such a wicked act for this Marine Corps veteran? No one knows yet, uh, but uh, we pray for the families we, of all the victims. We pray for the wounded. We pray for the traumatized. Everyone that got out of there uh, whether you were shot or not, if you, if you didn't get shot, but you just survived it, and they, they were crawling out of windows, they were crawling up into the attic, they were, uh, people were doing everything they had to do to get out of that place, and um, it's, a, it's a terrible scene, folks. It's an absolutely horrific scene that happened, and of course, that man right there, Ron Hellis, 29 years, California. California Sheriff Department uh, murdered right there in cold blood as he tried to come to help the people. Uh, and uh, just a horrible, horrible scene. The trench coat killer uh, struck in California last night. And so we pray for everybody there. And, and really, this nation needs a healing. Uh, but these, these are getting more frequent all the time. They're, not, it's getting, they're getting more frequent, guys. 
They're literally getting more frequent. Uh, let me tell you what else is going on. Um, there's also an airstrike took place in Iraq, actually, uh, this morning, killing 12 ISIS fighters. Now, this was done by the Iraqi uh, military. They did the airstrike, and they killed 12 ISIS fighters using an airstrike. So um, uh, you're starting to see the nation of Iraq getting more and more, getting their, uh, getting their hands around, uh, stabilizing their government. You know, I tell you, I thought for a while back in 2000, the summer of 2014, when ISIS first came on the scene and they're just running through Iraq and, and Syria, and they were calling themselves you know, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria and, uh, and ISIL and ISIS and, and they were going to take over the whole Levant and it caught everybody off guard, really. It really did. And uh, boy, but Iraq has finally turned it around uh, to some degree, so we're, we're glad for that. Oh, by the way, there was a, a, a crazy situation in Barcelona, Spain that we've got to talk about. Uh, really strange, to be quite honest. In Barcelona, there was um, a situation that would develop. A woman had a hand grenade belt. What? She had it in her bag, and it looked like a hand grenade. There it is. But it was actually a belt that you wear. That's the buckle of the belt that looks like a hand grenade. Now, she ended up, it, 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 this happened in the uh, train station. Total chaos. They shut the train station down. Um, it was insane. Trains were closed. People were stuck. Mass chaos and confusion. They didn't know if this was a bomb or not. The belt buckle triggered a bomb alert. This took place in Barcelona. And... Uh, the woman who had the bag with the belt in it, she left the bag and went ahead and got on a train and was gone. They were looking everywhere for her while they had everybody in containment. She was gone, but the bag with the hand grenade belt was still there. So what is that about? Okay. Um, strange things happen, guys. That's all I can say. Strange things totally happen. You talk about strange. What about the dude in Kansas City? I don't even know. I mean, look, we got a we got a guy without pants, without pants on, falling through the roof of a Waffle House in Alabama. That's bad. Okay, that's really weird. They think the guy got drunk, uh, went to the bathroom, and then and then got confused on the stairway and went upstairs into the attic. I look, I don't. But this guy here in Kansas City, what is he thinking? His name is Sean Casey. This guy had an eight-foot alligator in his home that would sleep in the bed with him, cuddled up next to him. An eight-foot alligator. He also had three exotic snakes in the house. Uh, anyway, the uh, authorities were called, and the snakes had to be removed. He even called the gator catfish. He named the, the gator cat. There's the alligator. Are you serious? Are you going to have that in your house? An eight-foot alligator in Kansas City, Missouri. It's getting bizarre out there. It's getting stranger by the minute. Anyway, that thing could kill you. That thing could eat you. It's an alligator. Oh, my. It's a, it's a gator. It's an absolute gator. What? People are, have lost their minds. They, they, it's a gator. We're not talking about a baby, little baby alligator in a, in a little, you know, glass case or something. This is an eight-foot gator named Catfish. Okay, Kansas City. Um, oh, oh, by the way, uh, while that's all going on, um, what about Edward Snowden? Okay, now Edward Snowden has just came out and he's saying that uh, the uh, Saudi Arabian journalist that was uh, murdered over in the 
Saudi Arabian consulate in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, Edward Snowden released last night and again this morning. We hadn't heard from Edward Snowden in a while, but he's saying that that the Saudi Arabians actually used Israeli intelligence software to track Kosagi and to know exactly where every move he was making. So I don't know why Edward Snowden brings that out. I mean, I guess, I mean, Israel does have some great intelligence. The Mossad are really, really good at their intelligence. I don't know if he's trying to blame Israel with that statement. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the United States and several nations use some of this technological advanced uh, to use. I mean, I don't know what Edward Snowden's motivation was for that statement. I really don't. And I find it strange that it, he released that just before Put when Putin said he's not going to meet with Netanyahu. And when Putin, when the Russian uh, government said that if Israel goes in there to try to hit Iranian targets, that they will shoot their planes down. The same time that's going on, Snowden comes out with this story. So I'm not sure what that really means. I, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not going to. I just don't know his motivation, okay? But uh, Edward Snowden, we haven't heard much from him. He's still hanging out in Russia. I don't think he's going to get to come home to America anytime soon um, because uh, the, he, they'll probably arrest him for espionage. But anyway, that's what he said, and so that's interesting. I'm just going to say that's kind of interesting. Oh, did you guys hear what's going on in Guatemala? Um, Mount Fiego or Fugo. Mount Fugo has erupted, massive eruption for the fourth time this year. Plume of smoke and ash and fumes released from the top of the volcano. This is the fourth massive eruption this year in Guatemala. In the, so once again, you know, here comes the third wave of the five waves of energy is the pressure building from, uh, what does that all mean? I don't know, or is it just bad timing? But uh, there it is, Guatemala, Mount uh, Fugo uh, erupts for the fourth time. Uh, really, really uh, powerful eruption too. I mean, that's a very powerful eruption. And of course, these volcanoes, when they erupt all over the globe this year, they're filled not only with just smoke and ash, but there's a lot of poisonous gas a lot of toxins and all kinds of stuff. And you know what happened in Hawaii. It just never ended, okay? The lava just flowed and flowed over 100 days. Uh, just an insane uh, erupting situation there. Oh, by the way, guys, uh, China wants to alter the weather in a weather modification plan by the Chinese. I did a video on this earlier today, but what China is doing China says they have a secret way, a new technology. They, they are calling themselves the rainmakers. China will move clouds and make it rain in different places using satellites in terrifying weather control plan. But now here's what China says they're able to do with this weather modification. And this could be a prophecy alert. I actually got one of their um, news guys. Uh, Here's, here, let him explain it. Here's what China wants to do. Brock, you ready for this? Um, give me one second here. And we'll show it to you. We have the video right here. Here we go. To ensure stability in its agriculture sector, China is not leaving things to Mother Nature. The Chinese government is planning to employ upgraded weather control systems in Heilongjiang, Jilin, and Liaoning, the three provinces responsible for 54% of the nation's rice production. The project, which will continue until June, involves creating artificial rain using cloud seeding, special aircraft, rockets, and much more. China has been tinkering with the idea for years. 
But how controllable can the weather be? Skeptics fear the consequences of meddling with nature at this level could be. I mean, are you serious? To ensure stability in its agriculture sector, China is not leaving things to Mother Nature. The Chinese government is planning to employ upgraded weather control systems in Heilongjiang, Jilin, and Liaoning, the three provinces responsible for 54 percent of the nation's rice production. The project, which will continue until June, involves creating artificial rain using cloud seeding, special aircraft, rockets, and much more. China has been tinkering with the idea for years. But how controllable can the weather be? Skeptics fear the consequences of meddling with nature at this level could be. So, um, you know, it could be kind of catastrophic. It could be dangerous if you can do this. Now, they actually have a map. I'm going to show it to you here of what they're trying to do. Here's what they're saying. But, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I remember, Mitch, if you're watching from California, you, you, you talked to me about harp and how jet streams can definitely be changed and how... And the United States has changed the jet streams really in Northern California for 15 years. It hasn't snowed uh, in this one area that where it used to snow every year. And that's because the jet streams are no longer there. China's got a drought problem up in what's called the Yellow River Basin up there. And down there near Tibet, they've got always massive rain and flooding. So what China says they want to do is move those clouds and have them rain over in the Yellow River Basin area. They said they have a new technology to move the clouds. Now they can also, once the clouds get over there close, they can also then do a cloud seeding to make it rain, all right? Um, and they can also do, uh, do things to move clouds so that prevent it from raining. The question is, if somebody gets this capability going, they could use it as weather weaponry against other nations by creating storms, creating floods and landslides and rains. And, or they could uh, take the water from one country and use it for another country. Okay. Um, there's six satellites that will form a ring to spot water laden clouds and create an atmospheric corridor to allow them to move to the arid regions according to state media. Satellites will seek out and then surround um, the rain cloud hotspots before unspecified technology will guide the clouds to their targets by creating an air channel, they call it. Now, this translates to a sky river is being developed by the Shanghai Academy of Space Flight Technology and will reportedly be launched in the year 2020. China's damp southern region, as we showed you, often floods while the north suffers drought. Uh, but the problem is having enough rain clouds to uh, instigate a downpour with. So now the state scientists and researchers are pursuing weather modification techniques to guide the clouds north to the Yellow River Basin, which is particularly dry. The ideal of controlling the weather is far from new in China. Back in 2008, the country seeded clouds with silver iodide. Why did they do that? To ensure that the rain would stay away from Beijing Olympics. Uh, long term, the goal is to push 5 billion cubic meters of rain water each year north to the Yellow River Basin but the scientists have not revealed how they're going to create this channel of air through which to push the rain clouds. The People's Daily said they would analyze the where they were before deploying a new type of manual intervention technology to move them north. So here we go, geostorm, here we go, weather modification. Can they do anything about the smog in China? might be more important than shifting the rain. All right, well, anyway, the China's the new rainmakers, and I guarantee you that not only China, but the United States and many other advanced nations are working on weather modification and are actually doing. Do you guys remember when it snowed? Brock, I don't know if you remember this, but in around 2013 or so, 
that it snowed and the snow was plastic. What? Uh, I actually went out and got some snow, brought it in my uh, in in the uh, apartment we were living in there, put it down on the counter, and took a blowtorch and tried to melt it, and the snow wouldn't melt. It just turned black and smelt like burning plastic. And I videotaped it doing it. It ended up on Fox News. They showed the videotape on Fox News Channel 32 out of Chicago. Actually showed it. But it wouldn't burn. I mean, it wouldn't melt. It just burned and smelt like burning plastic. So we already know there's a lot of this kind of... Uh, and then what about the chemtrails? Are you serious? The chemtrails. I mean, are you serious? And then you got the insect modification. All right, and, and the DNA manipulation uh, and the genetic um, altering and, and, the, and you've got the uh, uh, food is being uh, genetically modified organisms. Uh, the food is losing its flavor. The food is losing its value. The food is losing its uh, vitamins and minerals. I mean, <coughs> all of this is going on, guys. All of this is happening. This is not, you know, look, we're just reporting you know what's amazing? We used to report on this stuff and people said, you're a conspiracy theorist. Then, five, ten years later, what we report on comes to pass and the mainstream media now embraces it. Well, what about the guys that was telling you about it ten years ago? They weren't conspiracy theorists. It was information that we already knew about. We knew it was happening. We know the people working in the labs that are doing it. We know the people working in the underground cities. We've talked to the truck drivers that's driven deep, deep, deep into the earth. We've met with government officials who've been involved in different things that goes on in Washington. We know what's happening in the secret underground bases because there are people, God has got people planted everywhere. Just like Daniel was made one of the presidents of Babylon, just like Esther was the queen uh, of the Persian Empire, just like, you know, I mean, the, uh, all over the Bible, the Lord would set, Joseph was the governor of Egypt. I mean, the Lord just keeps putting people strategically in positions so that they can do something on the will of God. And, it, and it's the same thing happening today. We're living in a time where, look, what about CERN? You know right now there are people that understand what's happening at CERN and are wondering, what in the world are we doing here? And this goes on in laboratories down, up down in Antarctica. This goes on in underground bases. We know that there is uh, experiments and uh, enhancements and genetic modification and cloning and we could go on and on. Guys, let's be honest, we're living in a different time. Secret underground bases. We know it. We know about the connecting of the old Walmart tunnels. We know about it. We know about the 850 FEMA camps. We know about it. It's not a conspiracy. So in the last days, you're going to see more and more strange and bizarre things, things that you read about, maybe stuff that was in the comic books in the 40s and 50s, things that you read about in novels in the 70s and 80s, you're, and of course, many prophecies from this book, the Bible, all of the prophecies here will come to pass. We're living in the last days. Give your life to Jesus Christ and understand that it is accelerating the prophecy. Look, the technologies are catching up with the prophecies. There's an acceleration of biblical prophetic events taking place. We're living in the last days. Folks, something biblical is going on here with the signs of the second coming of Christ. And uh, there are some of you out there that are watching that have not made the major, 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 major decision that has to be made, and that's to give your life to Jesus Christ. It's not going to get better in this world. Oh, but Pastor Begley, they're going to have a peace agreement. Yeah, and then there's going to be sudden destruction. 
I know that mankind is trying to fix the problem, but you can't. You can clean up the cobwebs, but like my daddy preaches, you got to kill the spider. I mean, you can keep cleaning up the cobwebs, but you got to kill the spider. And until you do, it's just everything that's been done will be done again. Nothing new under the sun that hasn't already been done. Everything just keeps recycling. We're in this end times now. The only difference is the advancement of technology and the uh, crudeness of men's hearts that's on evil continually, just like it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying. Yeah, you can have, a, you can have Pepper show up at the airport and give you your boarding pass and tell you where your gate is, or you can have that other robot, uh, you know, that um, uh, starts to interrogate you. What? Uh, look, guys, the technology is advancing and catching up with the prophecy. Yeah, that AI lie detector. Thanks, Brock. That's all I need to see there. The AI lie detector. You need that guy meeting you at the airport. Okay. This is it, guys. We're, we're in the end times, okay? This is it. It's show time. It's showdown. It's showdown. We're in the end times. You guys got a cup of coffee. Are you saved? Because until you get peace, you, don't, you can't have real peace without Jesus Christ. We're going to play a song and give you an opportunity to make the best decision a man could ever make. We had people saved last night. A lot of folks rededicated last night. And, and uh, it was just a, a, a powerful time. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't put the Lord off, okay? Just type, I want to be saved. Type, I want to be saved. And the moderators will help me. Type it right in the chat. I'll write your name down. We'll pray. I can't save you, but Jesus will set you free. Make that decision right here, right now. You take chances. Burn the candle at both ends. Circumstances have brought you here again Standing on the edge, just about to fall One step away from losing it all You keep running, but no matter how you try There's nowhere to go place to hide how many times have you fallen on your knees and made promises choose Jesus today that you didn't keep just ask yourself before it's too late how much grace how much grace is it gonna take to bring you back to me? Somebody out there's hurting bad. Just type, I want to be saved. Let's get saved today. How much grace is it gonna take? Are you ready? Your defenses builds a wall around your heart. Consequences have torn your world apart. I keep reaching out You keep pushing me away Farther and farther With every passing day You keep running Today is the day of salvation no how you try, The white family wants no to be saved God bless you folks no How many of you hide How many times have you fallen on your knees and made promises? Oh Lord, that you didn't keep. Just ask, ask yourself, yourself before it's too late. How much? How much grace? Come on, you can do it. Is it gonna take to bring you back to me? I can feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody wants to be saved. Before it's too late. How much grace is it going to take to bring you back to me? The 
the Reshek family wants to be saved. Folks, I tell you, God is really speaking to some hearts right now. He's reaching out to you with a love that only He can give. And it's a sovereign love. It's, a, it's an agape love. It's unconditional. Why don't you do this right now? Brock's going to get one more song. We're going to play this opportunity for you to be saved. Call. Call upon the name of the Jesus. Call upon His precious name. In Jesus' name. The Resnick family wants to be saved. The White family wants to be saved. What about you? You ask me how it is that I'm still standing. How I've often made it through this storm. I can't boast of any special power. There is no secret, I just held on, and I held on, till the storm was over. Some of you are holding on. I don't claim to be a hero. Peter Hadzo wants to be saved. Praise I God. This is our life that has three children, wants to be saved as well. Praise God. I can tell that things are finally happening. Thank you, Jesus. I've got a lot of blessings. This is our I life with three kids, wants to be saved. This is your moment. How many others want to be saved? I would ever make it But while I would have waited Oh, I just held on I held on Till the storm was over Oh, I don't claim to be Another person by the name of Peter W. Wants to be saved Peter Hodzo and then there's a Peter W. They're different guys. There's others. People are coming to Christ today. Choose this day for God so loved the world. I don't claim to be a hero. That he gave his only begotten son. Praise God. We've got five names right here that we know of that want to be saved. And there's probably others out there that don't know how to get in the chat room but are watching on Roku, satellite television. Maybe you're watching on New Live Stream or Periscope or at my website. There's another one. Amanda wants to be saved. Praise God for you, Amanda. So does Sherman also wants to be saved. God bless you, Sherman. Praise God. And there's people watching at our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Some of you are watching at Periscope. Some of you are watching uh, at our backup YouTube channel. That's the Paul Begley Prophecy Channel. And then the archives. If you're watching right now on Google Plus or Twitter or Facebook or at my main YouTube channel, or if you're listening on the direct radio line or wherever you're at on any of these archives, 
and you're wanting to get saved, I want you to pray with me right now while I pray with these seven and more. And I guarantee you, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. I, I, I'm, I've made my mind up today that I need to get things right with God. And I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God. And I'm calling upon the name of Jesus. I'm calling upon the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Savior, the Son of the living God. And I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my life, to break, to break, to break every chain, to help me, Lord, in my time of trouble and in my time of pain. I'm calling upon your name, Lord. And so I repent of my sins and open my heart to Jesus Christ because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Yeshua is the Son of the living God, the Messiah, the Redeemer. I believe that He rose from the dead. I believe that He ascended into heaven. And I believe He's coming back again soon and very soon. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, precious name. Somebody shout, welcome to the family. Seriously, welcome to the family. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Storm raging high, water around them. They were troubled that night. Fear filled their heart. They felt they would die. They felt to remember the Master was nigh. He spoke the words, the winds all stood still, even the water obeyed his will. He calmed their storm, lie he will mind, if I just remember that he lives deep inside, so why? Should I fear the very same Jesus? He stays always near. He lives in my heart. He hears when I cry. I'll call on his name till the storm passes by.
passes by on his name on his name it passes by oh yes it's so good to have Jesus in your life I'm serious guys what a beautiful song that's Kevin Copley don't get him confused with Kevin Copeland I got a letter one time I can't believe it uh, yeah, that you had Kenneth Copeland on the air. I mean, how'd you get him? I said, I didn't. It's Kenneth Copley. Okay, Copley. Okay, anyway, good friend of mine, Kevin Copley, uh, out of Indianapolis, Indiana. And a lot of times, don't get him confused with Kevin Wilson uh, from London, Kentucky. All right, all right. Anyway, it's good to have everybody here. <laughs> Praise God. Are you serious? Okay, so I'm excited about these seven getting saved, plus many others. And I'm, I'm excited about what God's doing in your life. Let me just say something. Alan, I don't know if you're still out there listening. But praise God for him as he, uh, uh, you know, he had a problem there uh, with a, I don't know, the, the Social Security tried to not only stop his payments, but make him pay back the next 12 months, uh, which was just insane. Uh, and he called me and we had prayer. And, and uh, today, they, th within three days, quick reversal quick reversal, just like that, okay? And uh, they told him they made the decision three days before. Well, that was the same time he called and asked for prayer. So, okay, <laughs> you know, sort of like when Jesus healed uh, the, Jairus' daughter, and he asked, well, what hour did she get better? And they told him it was the same hour that Jesus had spoke. You know, it's just important to know that God cares about your finances just like he cares about your soul. Paul said, I would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now, we teach all the time that, you know, God loves a cheerful giver and that if you give, it shall be given unto you. That's what Jesus said, okay. If you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. There are folks that we've got some great folks out there, faithful tithers, faithful givers, focused and, and just understanding their... Uh, Christian responsibility in for the kingdom of God. Sometimes I get people that send me emails. I just, you know, they get mad at me about things. I'm like, I don't understand. It's free will. You, you know, you, you have to talk it over with God. I'm, I'm just sharing what the scripture says. I want to help you. When it says in Malachi 3.10 that if you bring your tithe and offering to the storehouse, God says, prove me. In other words, test me. See if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room to contain. Don't get mad at Pastor Bagley. Don't even get mad at the prophet Malachi. Okay? Uh, he's just relaying. Don't shoot the messenger here. It's just trying to help you get blessed, all right? Just trying to help you get blessed. I don't know about you, but I like walking in the kingdom blessing. I like walking in knowing that God's got my back. And how does he do it? Well, he does it because he speaks to the hearts of his people. And my job, of course, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and let God take care of the rest. And each and every one of us have a responsibility in the kingdom. And so I just want to thank you in advance. If you'd like to give today, please just go to our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There's the donate button right on the page. Right at the top, it just says donate. Click right on the word. Or scroll down a little bit and there's the easy button. That Billy Knight train loves that button. He just loves to hit that button. That's the easy button. And uh, just hit it and give whatever the Lord lays on your heart. If it's time to tithe, then tithe. If it's time to give a significant offering, maybe God has laid that on your heart. Maybe God has said, hey, I need you to give Pastor Begley this. You're saying, I don't understand why I need to do that. Do what God tells you to do. And then some of you out there, May want, to, may want to just say, you know, Pastor, I really want to get that, the final day's prophecy, okay? The four DVDs. One's on the final peace deal. One is on the red heifer. One's on the mark of the beast. And the other one is on the two witnesses. Four complete DVDs, all professionally made, prophetically packaged, for you right now, okay, right now. So just get your copy right now. They just arrived last night, and we shipped out a bunch of them this morning. There's still some here till they're gone. Get yours ordered today. You get four DVDs 
$25 and the shipping's free. So basically, I'm just doing everything I can to get it in your hands, okay? Just basically, that's what I'm doing. I want people to have it. It's that good a teaching, all right? And so you can give that way. Maybe you want to text give. There it is. There's the number on the screen. Just grab your cell phone and text the word give to that number. 765-327-4200. That's 765-327-4200. Text the word give and uh, Publicly Prophecy Ministries will come right on the screen. All right. And you can always write me. Put a check or money order in the mail. Send it today. And there's the address. It's Paul Begley Prophecy. You might have a, a, a prophecy in there. You might have a prayer request. Send it to me. Paul Begley Prophecy, 1048-B. That's 1048-B, Sagamore Parkway West. That's Sagamore Parkway West, Box 33. That's Box 33, West Lafayette, Indiana. West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. Write me, put it in the mail today. And if you'd like to help the prayer warriors, I tell you right now, uh, Katz Gardner doing a great job with all of these wonderful prayer intercessory people. I mean, these folks know how to reach the throne. This is why people are being healed, saved, delivered, set free. Miracles are happening because we have people who pray. Somebody always around the clock, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, you can go to the Public Prophecy chat room. If you need prayer, somebody's there praying. Uh, you can always leave your prayer request on the prayer wall. There's a bunch of people who check it every day and pray over the needs of the people every day on that prayer wall. All right? That's what we're, we believe in, power of prayer. And of course, Rachel's heart, Sister Heidi, believes in the power of prayer. She knows that's what moves mountains, okay? So feel free and do that. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you. If you want to help the blanket folks out as well, some of you may say, I want to start sending blankets in there so that they can anoint those and send those out to people. Thank God for the folks involved in that. Everything we'll send out. If, you're, if you need a Bible, I'll send you a Bible free and pay the postage. If you need one, just send an email to MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. That's MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. And if somebody is sick and needs an anointed prayer cloth, we'll send that to you. A blanket to those that are very, very ill and a chemo cap to those who are going through chemotherapy. All of it we do for free and we even pay the postage. All right. Now, if you got saved today, and I know seven of you, at least seven of you did, you need to get baptized. Find a pastor, find a church. Maybe it's a, a, a Messianic congregation and say, look, I got saved. I want to get baptized. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. All right. Praise God. Uh, or you can always have me baptize you sometime along the year when I'm in different conferences. Um, I know this year I'm going to be in uh, Dallas, Texas in late March at the Hear the Watchman conference. I'll be baptizing people there. And I also know that I think Sometime like in November, I'm going to be in Los Angeles, California for a Hear the Watchman conference, and I'll be baptizing people there. Or you can go with me to the land of Israel. You can go, Brock, you got that graphic. You can go with me on the Paul Begley Prophecy Tour, October 28th through November 7th. That's right, October 28th through November 7th. Guys, they, I don't know if they have the website ready at the travel agency. They said to give them a couple days, and I didn't realize that. So uh, I jumped the gun a little bit yesterday. But uh, uh, you just look, you can always pick up the phone, call the number if you want to. Just call them, see if they've got the website ready for you. You can call and get registered. Tell them you want to go with Pastor Paul Begley on that prophecy tour to Israel. October the 28th through November 7th. And here's the phone number. There it is. Brock's got it on the screen. 1-800-929-4684. That's 1-800-929-4684. Option two. Now, I might get in trouble with Heidi because I wasn't supposed to say this until they got the website ready. So can you guys tell Heidi to give me some grace? How much grace is it going to take? <laughs> it's going to take a lot. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Guys, you don't want to miss tonight. 
Tonight, 10 p.m. broadcast, Mike from around the world. We're going to be talking about the five waves of energy. And of course, it's supposed to start inundating the earth November 9th to November 12th. What does that mean, Mike? Uh, we're going to try to find out more information uh, tonight. 10 o'clock, Mike from around the world will be our guest. Until then, I'll see you tonight. God bless every one of you. We love you. See you tonight, 10 o'clock. The Final Days Prophecy, a powerful four-part DVD set. Dr. Irvin Baxter sat down with me to discuss the prophecies of the last days. The Red Heifer, the Mark of the Beast, the Middle East peace deal, the two witnesses, all of it in this unique package prophetically prepared for you in this end time. You don't want to miss this one. Get your copy today at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, a four DVD set that looks into the most controversial subjects of the end time prophecies. The Four Horsemen. Oh yes, we're talking about the white one, the red, the black, the green, all of these phases of the breaking of the seals in these end times. Are you ready for the challenge? Well, get this DVD set only at my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. A brand new DVD, Zombie Apocalypse 2. I sat down with L.A. Marzulli and got a first-hand account from Pastor Casper McLeod. This DVD deals with the demonic spirits manifesting in the world today. The zombie craze has certainly caught the eye of Hollywood and movies and TV series. But do you really know what it is? Get the DVD. It's at my website right now. Secrets of the Sacred Incense, an unbelievable, extraordinary journey to find the apothecary, the mystical caves in the Holy Land where the sacred incense of the first temple were discovered. Come with me on a journey that will literally enlighten you to the truth of the last days, the biblical ramifications of the third temple, all in this powerful DVD. Get a copy of it now at my website. The Final Days Prophecy, a powerful four-part DVD set. Dr. Irvin Baxter sat down with me to discuss the prophecies of the last days. The Red Heifer, the Mark of the Beast, the Middle East peace deal, the two witnesses, all of it in this unique package prophetically prepared for you in this end time. You don't want to miss this one. Get your copy today at paulbegleyprophecy.com. Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, a four DVD set that looks into the most controversial subjects of the end time prophecies. The Four Horsemen, oh yes, we're talking about the white one, the red, the black, the green, all of these phases of the breaking of the seals in these end times. Are you ready for the challenge? Well, get this DVD set only at my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. I want to thank all my partners for standing with me, for helping us in the mission of leading people to Jesus Christ, for winning souls into the kingdom. Our live broadcast online, we're seeing 25, 30 souls every day accepting Christ as their Savior. And right here on this television broadcast, so many have come to Jesus Christ. We couldn't do it without you, but we can do all things with Christ. So thank you again for being our partners. God bless all of you.